Hey guys, welcome back and straight to recording because we got a timer. We've got letters. Meow. Butcher님, please, brother. What should I do? What should I do? So we got that one. We got that one. We got those two. And we got. We have to align for them. That's end of line for her. Not in line with him. Key evidence. It's not my justice. So we've got end of line, end of line, end of line, end of line, end of line. End of line for those two. That's the only one to not end of line. Let's do him first. I know we've got a timer here. Wind was so strong I could have barely open my eyes when I came out of Officer Min Jun's home. I held a recorder in my hand as tightly as I could. It was a final leave that Officer Min Jun left for us. It was also the only evidence I could prove Lieutenant Kang's innocence. Lieutenant Kim had been behind everything the entire time. No wonder he wouldn't let me get anywhere near a case. Whenever expected I would have been living in a movie full of about traitors and a police force. I recorded in the back pocket of my pants when I sensed someone looking at me from a nearby building. I looked up just in time to see a dark shadow moving away from the window. I had a bad feeling so I started running. No matter what had happened I had to take the evidence to a police station and I had to hand it to someone I could trust. On my way back to the station, there was a pedestrian bridge. We were under a bridge with some woods. I could see eight, no, nine amateurs hiding with a shadow of trees staring at me. One of them had just turned off his flashlight. Her weakness was after me open. So these are the people Lieutenant Kim was after, after me? No, they were sent here to kill me. Perhaps a shadow I'd seen earlier in the window saw me leaving and they'd realised I might have something on them. Even still, these losers were no match for me at all. Fine, come on me. I might as well just send them into jail. Stop my right foot hard on the ground and dash across the bridge in a zigzag. I heard 16 gunshots. By the time a bullet case fell to the ground, I was already hiding high up in a tree in the woods. Right beneath me was panicking. After all, they were just a bunch of pathetic lackeys who had no form of training. Some of them were stupid enough to turn their flashlights back on, exposing their positions. I'd always thought the police were a symbol of justice. Never would I imagine that one day I'd be fighting against them. But I knew better now. Didn't matter who the opponent was, what mattered was that justice will prevail! I checked again to make sure the record was still tucked safely in my back pocket. But held a tear in my palm. I leapt down from a tree and pounced by Hoju on three men with cover of rustling leaves. Okay. One of them was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, a pair of beach shorts, and the last one was leather jacket. All three fell, one for the other. Six of the men nearby, I climbed back up a tree. I appeared to attack several times. Soon I had taken several of them out. When it grazed me in the back pocket, I could feel a burn on my butt. I reached my back pocket, I jumped down out of a tree. The knife man was also taken out after I hit him with the same action point. point. The bullet had punctured my back pocket. The recorder put inside was smashed to pieces. Damn it all! I was too careless. I thought it was a knife man who had fired at me. But I realised he hadn't been carrying a gun when I came out of a tree. Or if someone else had taken a shot. I looked around. I couldn't see any sign of a tenth person. Whoever it was, there must be someone good. He might have already left the scene. The only purpose might have been to destroy the evidence, not to kill me. I must have had a total confidence that even if I had told someone about what I'd witnessed in, and heard in person, no one would ever believe me. Now I'd lost, own, now I'd lost my only concrete evidence. Damn it. How could I let this happen? I said it so hard a few bird nests fell out. I heard birds chirping in panic above me, the sound of my wings flapping. Please, brother, please guide me. You can avenge Officer Min Jun, Fode, Lieutenant Kang's innocence, and defend ju justice. I wanted to give everything I have. Okay. So. We know there's a tenth man. I'm going to do that so I can reach for my back pocket before the body grazes me. I found my butt with my hand. Luckily, the bullet only grazed my pants. Being a little relieved, I looked up to see where the bullet had come from. The moon peeked up from behind the rain clouds. The tenth person walked out from behind a tree four metres away. The moonlight shone through the trees and cast a spotty shadow upon his face. There was a face that resembled a old and cunning fox. He looked to be around 40 years old. His eyes and mouth were slightly bent, forming a ruthless expression on his face. 
Where is it? His voice was squeaky. A perfect match for his looks. After saying one word, I flung my tail towards him and quickly wrapped around his right hand, which was holding his gun. The tail was wrapping around more and more tightly around his wrist. Before I could force him to drop the gun, raising his left hand to support the other. He pulled the trigger. Raised my left arm in front of my face, but it pierced through his skin and drilled into my muscle. How it stopped next to my radial bone. Put down my arm before I could see what was going on. The old fox had charged right up at me. I poked two fingers straight into my eyes. A high flying scream echoed in the woods. The birds fluttered and scattered as they flew away. I surrender. I looked on the ground and covered my eyes with one hand while warm blood oozed out of them. I pounded on the ground defeated. What you want is a hole in the trunk, a battery of air. The old fox had heard what I said, walked in front of me and pushed out the gun against my head. Oh, that's an easy place to look. Thanks. A deafening gunshot exploded next to my ear. I collapsed to the ground. I feel like leaving you alive would cause too much trouble. I always hated trouble. Who are you? I want to know before I died. Oh, me? I'm Juming you, the Moosen Gang's next leader. Okay. Jump down afterwards. Put my button in my hand. Okay. Moonlight's on his face. His face was emerald. Pony Fox. Four years old. Blah, blah, blah. Four could force him to drop a gun. Yeah, this looks very similar. Okay, am I going to give out the um, position again? It's in a bird nest of a tree over there. Okay. My piece of evidence is going to fall into his hand. Or not. My tail morphed into a silver spear, heading straight towards the old fox's chest. Attack number 10 Heart Piercing Spear. The old fox must have never expected a blind focus still fight back. He probably would guess not killing me when he had a chance. His chance was gone. A tail went through his heart and he only let out a gasp. He fell to the ground. It was dead. I stood back up, wiped the bullet off my face so I could see a little, probably not too well. From well, my mostly red limited field of vision, I jumped up a tree and fetched a recorder. I couldn't delay for one more moment. I seemed to running towards the station, hoping nothing else would go wrong. Hey, good at it. And the countdown still continues, apparently. No more letters. So let's jump straight into... This is my justice. And this grilled sofa. An 85-inch TV. High-end beige-coloured wooden floor. Several bloody teeth were scattered on the ground. The morning sunlight shone through the windows and bounced off those teeth. I was in a joyous house, which was gated to the community 20 kilometres away from a Busan police station. The house was also a home of a former colleague. Kim Jong-ho was crouched in a corner. His hands were tied behind him with a rope. He hadn't slept the whole night, which left him in dark circles in his eyes. I'd only given him one choice. Tell the truth about what happened six years ago and confess that he'd been a rat. Until he did, I promised to him I would have put him up for a living hell. There are many parts of the human body that could be pulled out beside the teeth. Fingernails, eyeballs, whole limbs. Compared to what my colleagues had suffered is the hands, none of those even compared. The only problem was that I might not have enough time. I heard a loud speaker screech when someone turned it on outside. Lieutenant Kang, surrender now, you've been surrounded. We are here for you too. Let's talk about this. There's the voice of a sergeant from Unit 3. He was nothing but a useless ass kicking, ass kissing pretty face. About an hour ago, the police had surrounded his house. So called Lieutenant U Lieutenant Unit 3 Rescue Mission was being used was being carried out by Unit 3 themselves. After three minutes of pointless negotiation, a sergeant sent in four of his men with assault rifles and smoke grenades, hoping to take back the hostage by force. What an idiot. Two of those men were promptly knocked out and laid by the wall, while we were two had to jump out the window to escape. The room was a complete mess, as if it had been through an airstrike. The sofa on the floor were riddled with bullet holes. A tropical fish tank only had half a piece of glass left stuck for a frame. The exotic fish were lying on the floor and been stepped on by numerous times, but now look vague like a bowl of Korean. Uh, Bippin' Black. Of 
course, I was pretty sure Lieutenant Kim wouldn't mind his minor inconveniences. I lay my back against the wall and sat down beside him. Turn on the TV. It's miraculous he hadn't been hit once. The news reporter was talking about some prison break that happened at Hong Kong Central Prison. Tons of strange things happened there. I remember it had been almost a year since Hong Kong had been hit by a huge earthquake. Since the hypocenter of the earthquake had been never been located, it had become an essential sensational piece about, about, of news around the world. Reporting in the earthquake had gone on for over six months, lasting from when it first happened to reconstruction. Eventually became quite annoying. News day seemed more intriguing. It happened to be a name on our new and refugitive list, Pi, who was infamous even in the global community. It was someone who had a unique sense of justice of his own. He had money perverted criminals shirt shitless. Reports said Pi his accomplice's getaway car was found at a port on their escape. Which meant Pi had not very likely fled into some other country. Interesting. I lit a cigarette. The sound from a TV seemed to dissipate along with faint smoke. My thoughts drifted back to the past. I started thinking about what was later referred to as the W620 incident. Six years ago, I'd just joined Criminal Investigation Unit 2 as a rookie. I was the kind of person who would just talk about justice at the time, despite having no experience. Come to think of it, it'd been exactly like Chang Yong Min. At the time, a new major had just been assigned to Busan. To make a show of force, the new major announced an unprecedented campaign with both bold and ambitious. It's called Operation White Bay. The goal of the operation was to clean up the violent gangs around the Busan Bay area, and make all the, the illegal activities. If necessary, the police were given permission to shoot on sight if they felt endangered, and there would be no consequences. Back then, Busan's gangs weren't even remotely as powerful as they would become. As a result, I went through the darkest period I've ever faced. Less than two months, our operations have been reduced to one-tenth of their peak. The W620 incident was the codename for a final mission during the whole operation. The mission was assigned to Criminal Investigation Unit 2, my unit. It was the night before the mission, and as a rookie cop, I felt ecstatic. I kept thinking about how I could finally be a defender of justice. To make sure the mission would go perfectly in the shell phone in front of my beautiful lieutenant, I went to the scout, scout location alone without authorization. My selfish and careless stupidity ended up exposing our plans for the entire mission. I will never forget that damp and dark room. The severed heads of my teammates were lined up on the floor in a straight line. Each of them had a different look on their face. Each of them had a stream of blood coming out from under them and had merged into a web of death and carnage. In the end, the only ones left were me and Lieutenant J. Gao. I gave up on my plight as a police officer, and a man, crying, held onto our enemy's legs, begging him to spare the lieutenant. I still mur murdered Lieutenant J. Gao in an even more gruesome way, just to mock me. The moment she died, I blacked out. When I finally woke up, I was in the hospital lying down. Some strangers put in suits were standing next to my bed. Everything felt like a dream, but it wasn't. 620 became a bloody lesson for every single police officer. Operation White Bay was immediately halted. A new major was sacked, replaced by an older officer. Under command of the old man, official records about w, uh, W620 contained but a single line. During a brutal conflict, the officers of a criminal investigation unit 2 valiantly sacrificed themselves and eliminated the remaining violent criminal members of the Musang gang. The only survivor of the incident was Officer Kang Bekia. To get the police policing back on track as soon as possible, the old man instructed us to keep the name Unit 2 and to be the new unit, Unit 4, appointing me to be its lieutenant. I was in a slump for a while, tried to avoid the old man whenever I could and couldn't think about work. Until one day I was so drunk I passed out on the side of the road and someone grabbed me. I was kidnapped by a strong young man. He locked me in his home, interrogated and tortured me. He wanted to know the truth about W620 and the truth about those deaths and the truth about how I was the only one who survived. But I didn't know any more than he did. I didn't understand why I was the only one who lived either. If anything I knew it, I wish I had died of him so that I wouldn't be living in so much pain. The torture went from starvation to dowsing me with ice cold water to whipping me with a belt. Slowly my consciousness started to drift away, though I don't know if it was due to hunger or pain. Eventually I found myself standing in a small dark room. There was nothing in the room except for a dim light bulb dangling in the middle of it. I met another man in that room. He was a head shorter than me. He had very messy hair. His eyes were filled with dangerous menace. He said his name was Yang Yun. He was six years younger than me and was the one who killed those people who had hurt us. That was the first time I met my second personality. It's quite unbelievable, but anyone that's seen Yang Yun with his own hands eyes would not think I'd made him up. The strongest young man met him and let him know the truth, so he let me go. He told me his name was Yego Wang Yun. 
He was a younger brother of Lieutenant Jago. Eventually, re existence my second personality. It became a top secret, known only to me, Jaeger, and Yom. We all man a few and a few other trusted individuals. That was the end of that story. Still, it was extremely difficult to completely heal the pain. After Operation White Bay was abruptly terminated, the gangs eventually came back into power. Yego Wan Yam himself joined the Bugman Gang and became a full member. Meanwhile, I agreed to accept the old man's appointment as a lieutenant for a newly formed Unit 4. I set up many special rules for my unit. For instance, lieutenant's orders must be obeyed at all times. Also, a unit must drive for the highest level of efficiency. We are only absolutely minimal necessary personnel. I never considered Operation White Bay to be a mistake. It was my fault. I should not have acted on my own without authorization. I always wanted to cause the death of Lieutenant and everyone else. Justice wasn't something you could just talk about. Justice that couldn't be defended was no justice at all. I made a scrapbook of everything I could find about the operation. Unit 2, Mission 620. Every once in a while, I'd look back at the book and keep reminding myself what I had to do. For the past six years, I've been living through memories of my colleagues and the guilt I've felt for them. And last week, I happened to notice that tattoo on the arm of a drug dealer from a Muslim gang. There's only one photo left from 620. I've seen that photo several times. I can remember every single detail. The scene where a mission failed were police medics and bodies. There was one person in the crowd had his back towards the camera. He had an exact green pipe on, it, on his arm. He was talking to Lieutenant Kim. Six years ago, Kim had only been part of Unit 3 for less than two years. Still, he was seen it to me. Although he was only a junior officer, he somehow solved a number of cold cases all by himself, which caught the attention of the higher ups. Soon after 620, during the internal personnel change, Lieutenant Unit 3 had been in, complete, in competition with J. Gulf for captain's position, which promoted to leave the entire criminal investigations department. Uh, Kim Jong Ho was naturally selected as successor. So then realised that I'd ignored one thing all along. Even if they had noticed me during my scouting and followed me, we could only have had some idea about plan at best. However, the enemy seemed to know every last detail of our mission's plans. The plan had been leaked, but I rat on the inside. I began to hunt for more evidence as soon as I could have that break breakthrough. However, we were saying Kim had somehow learned of my investigation as well. She had thrown the first punch. The screeching of a loudspeaker pulled me back to my memories. Kang back here! Are you crazy? Have you forgotten me if you were sworn in? Your man's voice echoed into the house. How could have I forgotten? If it weren't for open my remaining faith in the people in those uniforms and badges, I wouldn't have let Kim live until now. Nevertheless, it's time for it finally to be all over. I stood up and walked to the closed curtains. Grab Lieutenant Kim by his collar. Bullets hit flesh. Kim fell to the ground in front of a window. A sudden breeze came from the window beyond the curtain and blew the curtains open. It was a perfect day for a sniper. Heard a very unnatural bird chirping coming from a distance. Must be an operation signal. Put down my gun. Blood was gushing out to Kim's body. However, nothing happened at the start of the signal. Perhaps he realised what ever plan he and his men was cooked up. It was already too late. Tears were running down my face, but I didn't feel the joy of vengeance. Instead, I could feel my heart being drowned with a dreary emptiness. I suddenly saw my younger self from six years ago. It was at a commencement police academy. I gave a salute. It's my oath. I will, to the best of my power, bend to all offences against people and poverty. But pests were not people. The emptiness has slowly turned into exhaustion. I high-fived young gun in the dark. I walked to a corner of a dark room and sat down. I lit up a cigarette. I no longer cared about anything that happened in the outside world. I didn't regret any decisions I'd made. This was my justice. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to save that one until next time. Join me next time when the counter will still be going. Bye-bye.